Next in our biped rollout is the footstep mode. You'll notice the footstep icon has the blue and the green foot. If you left click on that, we'll go in our footstep mode. And when we do that, we have two new rollouts similar to the uh, figure mode where the rollouts change. We now have one that is a footstep creation rollout and a footstep operations rollout. Now the basics to how footsteps work. Um, for biped, we're going to be creating footsteps uh, inside the viewport. These footsteps are similar to a gizmo. And these gizmos hold a position and rotation variable. And the foot is actually going to be trying to go towards those positions that we set inside the viewport for moving and translating the character. So let's start off with how do we create a footstep. Um, the footstep creation rollout is going to give us two options. There's actually three options for creating a footstep. The additional options can be looked at with our motion capture where we can actually adjust uh, the import of motion capture. But the two that we have right here for footstep creation is going to be a single footstep creation at the current frame and we have a multiple footstep creation. Next to that we're going to see a state, a way of walking or moving our character. And the first one is going to be a walk sequence, the next is a run, and the next one is going to be a jump. Now you notice that as you click on this, the properties down here change. These properties are going to be called our timing parameters. Depending on the type of mode that we have set, if we're in walk, we have a walk footstep and a double support. Now what do these actually mean? The walk footstep is saying that how long, how many frames do you actually want the foot to be on the ground during transitions. So we say for a walk footstep, each foot is going to be on the ground for 16 frames before it moves. The double support is going to be saying that I want both feet on the ground for three frames as it walks. So this is a way of actually adjusting the speed and the transli translation between um, each footstep. Same as when the run, we have a run footstep. We're saying we want six frames uh, on the ground and we want nine airborne. And then with the jump, we're actually saying we want two feet down for at least five frames, and then we'll be airborne for 15 frames. So we'll go back to our walk, and we'll leave our timing parameters with a 16 and a 3. We'll use our single footstep creation, and we're on our zero frame for creation. And we'll left click in the viewport. We can see that we've set a green footstep. This is going to be used for the foot here and then we can left click again to set another footstep it's going to create a blue one for the left foot and we can just work our way through set about five footsteps now you'll notice that when we set them that it's numbering them in order back and forth it's from zero one two three four five so it's moving them from left foot to right foot left foot to right foot all the way through that order um, one quick note is that the display right now is set with a numbering order and we can see that up here in our display options. The footstep has the numbering. If we want to adjust that to just footsteps with no numbers, we can take it to no numbers. If we're trying to hide them in the viewport, we can also hide them in the viewport. I'll go back to the numbering. It's a good way to be when you're starting off setting your positions. Now we've placed these footsteps and we can continue to place more footsteps. We'll stop right here and we're actually going to adjust their positions. So these are just like gizmos that I can select them. I can move them around. I can reposition them closer to where they'll be useful to the character. The initial position, the zero position, is where it's actually going to move the character to. So if I have it here, the character's whole position will translate over to here for the starting point. So I'll start this one a little bit closer. And then from one to, this is where we say, how far of a stride do I want for the character? so I can actually move this position forward or backward depending on how far I want him to step. And the same with left and right, if we actually want to move him further out. Now the other option we have is to actually rotate, so we can rotate the feet. For instance, if we were wanting him to eventually start walking in a circle, we could actually move his position around so that he would start to walk around. Now if we place these feet and we go down to our timeline and we scrub through, we're going to notice that nothing happens yet. And this is because we haven't made these footsteps active yet. So we've made it through the footstep creation where we can actually set one at a time multiple and then the guy and then the timing parameters. But below that one, we've got the footstep operation. And this is where we actually turn the footsteps on 
so that we can see them working. So up here we have our create keys for inactive footsteps and I'm going to go ahead and select on that one and this makes all of our footsteps active and also sets in the animation for our character. So if we go down to our timeline, scrub through, we can see the biped actually moving around and transitioning through. Now you may wonder why did the foot go where it went? This is because I may have the footsteps at too far of a distance and it's actually not getting to it. So we still have the IK limits that are set in with our character. So the basics of this can be handled by going back to that all these footsteps are active now. We can actually go back into the footsteps, left click on anyone and adjust them. And when we do, the bipad is automatically going to adjust to that new position. So we can go through these and adjust each position and have the bipad auto adjust to that that spot. Now the next thing we can do, we'll notice under the footstep operations, we can actually deactivate the footsteps. So if we deactivate the footsteps, they no longer become useful. We can also delete some of the footsteps by selecting on the footsteps when they are active and using a delete option for the footstep. We can copy our footsteps and we can paste our footsteps. Our bend scale length and width options allow us a little more control. Beforehand we were doing more manual work with this. To actually rotate it we were having to bend and rotate these into position. We do have our bend option here which with a selection of footsteps allow you to actually select and through the radial dial we can actually just rotate a path. The scale is going to scale these in and out for us and we can adjust it either just by the width or just by the length on the scale. So depending on what you need you can set that property and make it work for you. So we're just going to step back and with these guys here we'll go back into our next creation mode And our next creation mode allows us to create a footstep and append it in the sequence. So here we're going to say with our number 5, we just want to place one number 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is just allowing us to append the footstep to the next footstep in the order. We can also change out how we create the footstep. So right now it was set to a walk we can adjust that and have it to a run. So at this point these footsteps get created as a run then you can set it to a jump and adjust from there. Depending on what guy you have set here is what footstep gets created inside the viewport. This is the basics of doing individual. Next we're going to look at creating multiple footsteps and the tools involved in that.